Hello and welcome to All Backed Up. I'm your host Dylan and I'm joined with Mark. What's up, Skip? <laughs> oh, fuck off. And, uh, <laughs> and Jack. Hey, Jack. Hello. Uh, so we're going to... I think we've all got some new game, or rather, games we've been playing to talk about today, right? We've yeah, mom. been pretty yeah. good at playing some stuff, which is... Go us, basically. Hey, we actually did the thing. Yeah. <laughs> we, all of us did the thing. Dylan, We're not what's your all thing? Completely useless. Uh, so, I spent the week not really managing to play Fallout, and I think this is something I talked about. I think when we started this, um, you did warn us this might happen. Yeah, that because it's it's one of those games that uh, I feel like requires long time sitting down. And yeah, I never managed sure. to get myself around to it, you know? I never thought, oh, I could play some Fallout now. Uh, and I thought I could this weekend, because my partner was away and whatnot. Um, but then we just played Apex Legends all day. Instead. <laughs> Literally all day. So, that's our bad. Uh, but then instead, because I was thinking of that, like, Fallout just wasn't really... I wasn't really wanting to get up and play a bunch of it. I thought, what else is there available to me that I can play that's been burning in my backlog? So I switched up. And that's kind of, again, what we said at the beginning, the benefit of this format, I think. We've, yeah. If, you, if you're not playing it, you might as well switch, right, to a different thing. Enjoy something else. Yeah, like the, yeah, the format is just kind of play whatever until you get bored and then play something else. The exactly. First, the, the one thing that I did almost immediately. <laughs> yeah. And then you went back, which was the weird part. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, but anyway. at least you went back. Um, yeah, true. But so I had to look through because I've still got my uh, month of Game Pass for two pounds or whatever. I had to look through on there to see if there was anything uh, that was either already in my backlog that was quite short or anything else that inspired me. And I saw that I don't know if you guys remember this game. I think you probably will. Uh, I saw that De Blob was on there. <laughs> what about De Blob Two? Uh, I. I think it was only De Blob. Yeah, oh, just being... Sadly. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, but that was that was one of these games that, for whatever reason, really sparked my interest when it first came out. And I never got around to playing it. But I did really like the... Uh, they had, like, back in the days when games had Flash games as well, as an advert. It was a very brief period, but it happened. Uh, and De Blob had one of those, and it was fucking great. It was such a fun game that it made me want to play this this uh, full version, which is a good advert, I guess. That's kind of the point. Mm. So I downloaded that and had a quick go. But I also downloaded uh, Ruiner as well, which I think I did mention at the beginning, and Chores got on his list too. And Yes, uh, Ruiner seems cool. So I've played a little bit of both, and I think Ooh. both of them have <laughs> very different games, but... Uh, <laughs> Quite Tell me about the blob about because the blob is the blob is I say I want to say properly old. The blob has been around. The blob was a Wii game, wasn't it? To start off with, yeah. The blob is yeah. like, it was like so definitively. Uh, well, I mean, if it, if it okay. was Wii, yeah, uh, wouldn't it be two thousand and four? Uh, um, <laughs> but that is that is like seriously a backlog game. Like that's that's old yeah. school. Also, it has been released on fucking everything, which I didn't realize. So it oh, talk to me about that. Have you just got the wiki page? Up? <laughs> no. Uh, so, De Blob is. I'll give a. Uh, De Blob is in a world of color. These like black and white guys uh, called Inked have come along and stolen all the color, uh, and you are part of an underground resistance to bring back color to the world. Uh, and you do this by being a blob, uh, the eponymous De Blob. Is he, and is he French? I, I, I guess. Maybe it's a French game. The French like making weird games. Um, and you go around destroying these little paint bots, getting yourself all painty, and then painting buildings and trees and stuff. And it seems like such a weird concept. And it is a weird concept. But I found myself, despite being utterly confused of like why am I just running around jumping on things like that's the only that's all you do you run around and you touch stuff with your body and it becomes the colour you are and that's it god I wish that worked in real life yeah it would be fun wouldn't it 
Uh, I'm always touching stuff in my body, but that <laughs> happens. It just stays the same. Useless. Uh, <laughs> but for some, for whatever reason, it is actually quite intriguing, and it's got it's got like a cool little. It's got a cool soundtrack with it, and it's quite jazzy. I think. Uh, maybe I'm not so great at music, but at least the, I think the soundtracks can change, so you can have the blob's mood, and you can select it when you start. Um, but I think the few I had were quite jazzy, and so it was just. What's That's this? like uh, Doctor Mario. Do you like pick a track at the beginning? Uh, yeah. Go so each fever or chill at the start of each level. There's so the first time I it was I think you kind of picked the blob's mood, uh, and the first one I had was blissful, and then uh, I think oh, what was it? The other, it was like energetic or something, but it wasn't called energetic. Anyway, uh, it was fun. And the sentence I ended up writing down for it, so I've been writing some stuff in it, but I think the key sort of takeaway I kind of had from it was that De Blob is just jazz med- meditation. And considering how old it is, I feel like it's quite ahead of its time because it is really meditative. You're, I mean, people do sort of adult coloring books and uh, watercolors for meditation, like yeah. mindfulness kind of stuff now, right? To Blob yeah, is the perfect mindfulness game. You're just going around painting shit. There's there's even a free play version, so you don't have to worry about time limits or attacking enemies. Is I think there, enemies are in the free play, but is there like a specific color that like everything needs to be? Is is it like that, or is it can it just be just like any color can be on anything? So the campaign, you just go around painting everything, whatever you want. You okay. have to you have to like kill kill bots. So there's like red, blue, yellow, green uh, yeah. bots everywhere. Wait, no, there's red, blue, yellow everywhere. Um, and then obviously you can combine them to make your different colours. Yes. Uh, and just paint whatever you want, whatever colour you want. But then also there's challenges you can get which kind of further the campaign um, and get you points to help you further the campaign kind of thing. And in those, then they ask you to paint the building certain colours. Oh, okay. And then right. something happens. But you, if you paint like an entire block... Uh, you get, you like unlock the block and release the people, and they get coloured, and it's all a party or whatever. <laughs> and you get more points for the more colours you put onto a block, kind of thing. Okay. Um, okay. Before you unlock it, so it's like it's sort of encouraging it to be all wacky, and but you can just go around and paint everything one colour. That's also fine. Uh, there's not really uh, other than the challenge bits, but that's I guess what the free play is for. Um, it's just about putting colour on stuff. And it feels so weird and looks so weird. the The controls are, I'd say, a little bit a little bit janky. It feels sometimes like I can't really move how you would want to. Um, I feel a bit like it used to be a Nintendo Wii game. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was about to say. And it's, it's sorry. <laughs> no, no, it, it's exactly that. It's uh, clearly not quite ported over exactly how you want. They, I think. The movement system in it, if you took to Blob and sort of tuned it up a little bit, just so... Like, even if it was kind of crackdown movement, but just the Blob, it would already be a bit better, just because you could jump around mm. and sort of be a little bit freer. But you can't really climb up stuff, and... Not that you need to, nothing's really that high at the moment. Um, but they, I think they could tweak the movement in it a little bit, just to... Make it slightly smoother to play, make it a little bit more of a um, a seamless experience because I think that's what it needs is because it's this kind of mindful jazz color game. Um, you don't want to be brought out of it by the gameplay. Yeah. Which I think sometimes it can. You can you can be doing something and then suddenly you don't really go the way you want to or you can't go the way you want to um, because the controls are just a bit odd. So if that was changed slightly, it would be, I think really great and yeah the perfect tool for today's modern stresses <laughs> so is there is there like is it just a purely single player thing where it's just you have the campaign and then you just go around painting stuff or uh, a... I think so I mean if you, they turned it into multiplayer that would just be like um, oh, what the 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 switch game with yeah the... Splatoon because that's, that's, that's exactly yeah, what I was thinking because I'm watching a video of it and it's like painting shit and like i imagine if they uh, if they had a competitive aspect or not competitive but like you know mo- like a multiplayer aspect to this then it is basically split splatoon ahead of its time so 
Oh, well, there's an advert from 2018 uh, I for... Think, I think the sequel introduced multiplayer, by the way. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, oh, really? That's yeah. What, okay. De Blob yeah. 2 multiplayer madness trailer. Uh, yeah. And there's people running around colouring stuff. Oh, it almost looks like De Blob 2 has that slightly better control scheme. Well, De Blob 2 was made for the ground up for PlayStation 3 and 360 as well as Wii. So it it it's, it was intentionally designed, I think, with analog controls the way you kind of yeah. want. So they're probably not porting in weird shit like they had. Pro- I imagine had to <laughs> with uh, the first one. Yeah, yeah, it definitely I, looks a I, bit. Yeah, I never, I never played it, but I was always interested. But I think it, it kind of went against my the rule that I formed very early on, which is don't play games on the Wii that Nintendo didn't make. Yeah, it's a pretty good rule. Yeah. And Although, it, like, I mean, it put me in good stead. Like, I stand by Mario Galaxy to the day I die, but oh, fucking it also meant that I did miss some games. Yeah, like De Blob <laughs> and, uh, oh, what was it? Was it Real Steel? Did you ever play Why well, you didn't Red play Steel. it? Red Steel, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Red Steel, I yes. did get that with my Wii, and it is one of the reasons I have that rule, because that game controlled... I like shit. Ah, oh, it's fun though. You get guns and swords. <laughs> this is true. You do hey, get man. guns and swords. You've never played but... Call of Duty Free on the Wii, then? No, oh, Jack. God. <laughs> that handles reason. like absolute trash. <laughs> You're not convincing me. <laughs> what I... I will say, actually, it's a game that Nintendo didn't make for the Wii that is phenomenal and possibly the best version of it is the Nintendo Wii version of Resident Evil Four. Is oh, oh really? Fantastic. He's really, really good. Isn't that the one where you have to like shake your controller to run away from the the boulder and stuff? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh, I love wanking that controller to get away from the boulder. <laughs> Just, mate, catch me in the living room wanking for boulders. It's wild. <laughs> <laughs> the Weaver, yeah, the Resident Evil Four Wii Edition is actually the best version of that game, and it's oh, wow, the okay. exception that proves the rule. I I, I think we've spoken about on. Um... On this, on chatting of aesthetic before, uh, I think I brought up Battalion Wars or Battalion Wars Two was one of my favourite games for the Wii. Don't think that's Nintendo. I don't know if we. I don't know if I spoke about it. I think it might be uh, Nintendo adjacent though, because it's in the it's in the Wars series, isn't it? Which Nintendo publishes. Oh, maybe, maybe I've just embarrassed myself. No, publish it's publish not, a Nintendo, yeah. Yeah, it's not made by Nintendo. It's made by the people who make like Advanced Wars, isn't it? But, but close they, enough. They they they, they are owned by Nintendo, aren't they? I think. Ah well, I'm a fool then. Oh, that game was good. You just yeah. I always wanted to get that. Actually, that is one that I always wanted to get and never did. Hey man, put it in your backlog. Stuff. You're gonna have to get yourself a Wii. Play Battalion Wars. I think I, think I have a Wii somewhere. No, everybody's. I've got, I've got a Wii U. Everybody's got a Wii somewhere. A somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> that's a weird sentence. I would like to play Super Mario Galaxy Two as well. There are see, so there are some games for the Wii that I still think are worth uh, playing, but they're only mm. Nintendo games. I never played Super Mario Galaxy Two either. Maybe I also need to go get my Wii. It's just sitting at home in its bag, being sad, which is a shame because the Wii is great. I got my fingers crossed for uh, the eventual HD release on the Switch that we all know is happening. They got to do it right. Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 HD edition. Seems like an awesome. easy thing to do, right? Cause... Especially since they've already ported Mario Galaxy to the, the NVIDIA Shield in China. Oh, really? Which is, the NVIDIA Shield is basically just a Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Yeah, but like only in China or something weird like that. So it already exists. The HD version of Mario Galaxy already exists, but only the Chinese have it. Hey man, maybe they're just saving it for E3. Aren't they doing Animal Crossing E3? They can do multiple things at E3. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> Surely. I mean, they're going to have to show off Pokemon at E3 anyway. Yeah, boy. <laughs> I say I mean, at E3. Not, no, they, they around E3. To. They could now not say anything about that game until it came out, and it would still sell like hotcakes. <laughs> this is true. Uh, they, it's going to sell m- miraculously well anyway. No I might what. buy a new Pokemon game for the first time since Pokemon Diamond. Oh, me, I'm hyped. 
<laughs> and I ha- and I haven't even looked at the trailer. I just looked. I just heard oh, they were making a dude. Pokemon game. It's like, yeah. I- <laughs> to be fair, the trailer is kind of just dog shit. Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys see like the meme that was flying around about a uh, Pokemon gun? Yes. <laughs> yes, that's the one I want. I want Pokemon gun. I want. I want my Pikachu to be strapped. Is that just the same Pokemon but set in America? Hashtag hot take. <laughs> <laughs> That is a oh hot God. take. Uh, I, my favourite meme that com- has come out of the new Pokemon is the fact that that character wearing a beret and... or not a beret, a Scottish... Uh, what are they called? Fucking... Hat. No, no, no. There's a there's a specific name. But yeah, Scottish but it's hat. It's a Scottish hat. <laughs> it is a Scottish hat. Uh, a Tam, is it? Isn't that... Uh, no, that's the Rasta hat, isn't it? The Tam. <laughs> Uh, women have also adopted a form of this hat known as a Tammy or Tam. Tamashanta. There you go. Tamashanta. Cool. Uh, yeah, she's wearing a Tamashanta. And the, the the things that have come out of that of uh, her just suddenly breaking out into some really aggressive Scottish. <laughs> when people talk to her is really fucking great. That is brilliant. I really like that. It, it's, it's yet another one of these games that's like, man, maybe I should buy a Switch. Because now there's... <laughs> Now there's like five different new games. I say new. Breath of the Wild came out two years ago. Oh, it's so good though. It came uh, out three years ago, man. It was 2016. When oh it yeah, because it came out. Came up. No, no. The Switch no. just had its second birthday. Oh shit. Okay. Then two years ago. Yeah. Sorry. Might be. Uh, I was get- three years is definitely too much. That would make me scared and sad. But I, I, I just can't. I always, obviously, Nintendo don't exist in the usual console cycle anymore. Yeah, yeah, they so just, just do really whatever. Hard the fuck to remember they want. when they did the thing. Yeah, my favorite part is the fact that the Switch is two years old and still the exact same price. Really? Yeah, uh, it's gonna... so annoying because I want one, but I also they find it hard to justify. Really good deals, though. To be fair, yeah, there have been some good deals. I remember I mean, very I early on. I think... Ooh, sorry, yeah. Very early on, there was like an insanely good deal where you could get one for like two hundred pounds. Or like £220. And uh, I didn't quite see... And then I didn't want to really impulse buy a Switch for £220. And then it's never been that cheap again. And it's like, God damn it, me. Why didn't I get it? <laughs> I think I got mine with... With two games for like 270 Yeah. There are some is, really good deals. Good. Mm. Yeah. But anyway, maybe I, I'll I mean, I don't up. know. I don't actually play mine anywhere near as much as I should, but yeah. it's a cool piece of kit. Nonetheless, yeah. the fact I've, that it exists is. I right. feel quite guilty about not like playing mine as much as I perhaps like should. Like I feel like I I'm inclined to play it, but yeah, it's just a bit dis- it's a bit disappointing to be honest. Oh well, now maybe I shouldn't get one. <laughs> no, it's not disappointing. Jack, Jack's no, lying. no, I mean, I like, think Jack's I mean, disappointed in himself. He's yeah. not disappointed in the Switch. Yeah, like the, the the Switch is a fantastic console. I'm just like, yeah, I I feel like I should be giving it a lot more love and attention than I currently do, and I just feel <laughs> disappointed in myself. I was like, come on, man, the Switch is like fucking awesome. But I, I hey, man, hey, man, I'll I'll take it off your hands. I'll give it the love and attention <laughs> it needs. <laughs> well, that's the problem, isn't it? It's like if I'm sitting down to play a game. It's like. Am I going to play a game on my PC, of which there are hundreds of many different genres and varieties, or am I going to play a game on a console? And it's like, okay, well, that starts to limit the kind of experiences I'm having on the console. And then it's like, okay, well, which console am I going to play? And then by the time it gets to choosing to play the Switch, it's like, I want to play three games. I have three games for my Nintendo Switch. And they're all good games, but... It just, I have to be in a very, very specific mind to have mm. narrowed the selection down to that point. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem, right? The Nintendo Switch is, and this is what it will be for me, is a console specifically for, like, a handful of games. I won't really want it for anything else. I guess maybe... You're doing a really good job of bringing out a lot of the best Wii games, or Wii U games for it, though, so, you know. I mean, there are loads of games on it that are good, but at the moment, in my... Like I want a Switch because I want to play Breath of the Wild. I want to play Mario. I will want to play Pokemon. I mean, I uh, I bought the Switch to play Mario. <laughs> like I, that's that's the reason I own a Switch because I went, hey, Super motherfucking Mario. So like, 
Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with buying a console just for one game. At least no. I don't, but I have a problem. <laughs> the first step is acknowledging it, so... It is also the only reason that I own a Wii U as well, is I was like, hey, Super Mario. <laughs> it is kind of the only reason... I mean, I... Yeah, kind of the only reason I got an Xbox was because of Halo, to be fair. I mean, I've played other games on it, and I'm glad I got it, because it meant I got to play, like, Titanfall and stuff like that. But... That was, those were was good. those were side effects of the fact I only wanted an Xbox for Halo. That's fair. And I now like it's going to be on PC, Halo Infinite. So fuck me, right? Damn Microsoft taking all my money. <laughs> Speaking of it, this has taken a turn from our old backed up, but I think it's important to say. Uh, have you seen the rumours about the next Xbox console coming out next month? Not quite the next generation, but a new Xbox console coming out next month. I've seen the rumours about a new... about an, a, a discless Xbox One S coming out soon. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. Which is, I think, really cool. Not for everybody, obviously, because, Jack, you'd be fucked. But a discless X1, Xbox One S that costs less than an Xbox One S as well. I think it would be cool. How much do you reckon it's going to cost? Uh, what, Same number. What do they What do they sell for at the moment? Xbox One S's, like new. Two hundred and twenty, new. Yeah, I think. I'd say like one eighty then, right? Two hundred and fifty, possibly. Uh, you remember. can get them. Curry's two fifty. Amazon one ninety five. Right. Yes, new from Amazon. One terabyte white, one ninety five. That's a good deal. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. Um, so I reckon. To be fair, I only got mine for more than that because I wanted to get a grey one so that it matched everything else, <laughs> which I think makes me a piece of shit. A little bit. Uh, I'd say then a discless one if it's going to cost less, like one eighty max, yeah. right? That's not a huge saving. No, right. That's you why to, I think need, max. You need to incentivize people limiting their options, don't you? I mean, I, I would say at least. I would say if you're going to be like, you can't have discs, you have to use our ecosystem, You're it's effectively saying, I could see like 180 with a year of Game Pass. Oh yeah, that would actually be yeah, a great deal. Cool. Yeah. I reckon they'll... So they've, they've already said that it'll be coming installed with games. You can, when you buy... Oh, I, didn't, I didn't read that. At, at least this is the rumour. That so Obviously it's not official. But what I've seen is that they've said... It'll come with some games pre-installed that you can kind of select at checkout. Um, so 180 with some games, I think, would be not too unreasonable, especially if places like Curry's are selling it for 250. But if the yeah. if the RRP is 195, then I'd say more likely 150. But I think 180 mm. with a year of Games Pass would be fucking sick. Yeah, I think you need to give people a reason to limit their options so dramatically. And if that op- if that option is well, you've got Game Pass, then I think that would be legit. Yeah. But... yeah. Especially since the buying them online, they can kind of just take the game away from you if they really want to do. They're uh, in the in your terms and conditions and stuff. Yeah, man. They're basically, it basically says, we have, like, we have the right to not license this to you anymore. Yeah, dude. Digital rights management is fucking mental and it's just terrifying to think that I own like 300 games on Steam and they can just someone just click their fingers and take it from me yeah shit man yeah man Ruiner Ruiner <laughs> another game I own is Ruiner the one with the dude with the fun mask who's a bit like mm. the guy in Watch Dogs 2 yeah it's kind of like Dark Bastion cool. I'm so fucking erect <laughs> Is it is it an isometric isometric game, right? Yeah, yeah, but it, it is, but it's kind of weird. It's the animation reminds me of something very. I say animation, the like style reminds me of something very specific, and I can't quite put my finger on it. And it's got like a the models feel very three D mm. in this isometric thing, almost like there's a very specific game. I think it's quite old, and I can't. I can't quite figure it out. But anyway, yeah, so it's kind of isometric and almost a twin stick shooter kind of thing. So you control movement with one, you look with the other. Um, yeah. Which is a little bit odd, but it 
thankfully doesn't have like the endless shooting kind of thing that lots of twin st- twin stick shooters do. Um, and I think that got a little bit of time to get used to, but then it's got stuff like dashing and uh, you can like multi dash where you select the places you're going to dash. Uh, time slows down but doesn't stop. You select where you're going to dash and then it does it. And it's these really cool movement things that all work well, like really quite fluidly. So that multi dash you can set and then while you're dashing, start doing attacks. Ooh, and it feels cool. very satisfying. So there were a few times where there was loads of enemies coming. I'd set the multi dash and then just fucking whack them with my crowbar as I went through. And it it is a me game. I'm telling you, <laughs> there there are movement systems galore. <laughs> Uh, and it's, I mean, there's just lots of mechanics, so I like it. Uh, and like, looks cool as well. I think at least, at least for me, like the thing that cool. gets me about Ruiner, and the reason that I think it, it does currently exist on a on a Steam wish list, for me at least, is it just looks fucking rad. Like yeah. it's super super stylish. Yeah, I think yeah, it's especially very. for like a, especially for an isometric. Uh, I, I, one of those style of games, you know, you, you normally expect them to sort of, I guess, not like, not really hold back on the on the like, graphic side of things, but not maybe pay attention as much as they perhaps could do. I don't know. I think I've got a, such a good experience with how graphically isometric games have come across. Like, if you think you've got Bastion and yeah, um, Transistor are both incredible looking games, and then. What like Hyperlight Drifter is kind of isometricy, I guess. Hyperlight Drifter's yes, isometric, Hyperlight right? Drifter yeah. is an isometric game. Um, that is two and a half D. Yeah, that is again like graphically. I just saw a magpie flying away with a whole tree, not a tree, but a stick. Sorry, that was incredibly distracting. Um, <laughs> fucking magpies. Uh, like that's a, again like a. Graphically, really, I think isometric games actually have because they're limited to this two and a half D. They have the opportunity to almost take the graphics a little bit further because you only have to draw half of everything. Yeah, exactly. You've got a lot more control over what's being seen, right? So you can really show it off and play with it in a fun way. I think, but. Yeah, I mean, I think just like I, also, it's obviously it's a it's a very stylish game, right? Oh yeah, ex- exceptionally, it's really cyberpunky, I guess. Maybe Chaw will have a go at me for saying that. Oh no, it's cyberpunk. Chaw can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he actually would have a go at me. I'm just always wary of. I bet he hasn't even read Neuromancer. He doesn't know what cyberpunk is. Oh, I bet he has. Oh, probably has, yeah. Also, I'm not. I want to come in with a weird flex. I'm, I am joking. <laughs> <laughs> that is a high level flex. My dad used to really like Neuromancer. Does that mean he's into cyberpunk? I guess. Fuck. Yeah, I mean, Neuromancer, I think, is credited with kind of inventing cyberpunk. Yeah. It's all about punching deck. Oh, that's what I love. Punch I'm me some decks. Deck. But anyway, so. Uh... <laughs> Did you punch deck in Ruiner? Not yet, but I feel like you could. Who knows? <laughs> so there's. It's... I saw some video. I saw. I saw a picture of a woman with like jacks in her head. You could jack into that woman. That's not a sex thing. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Talk to me about Ruiner before I say anything else. It's. Uh, I think incredibly. So the stylistic, the, like the style of it doesn't isn't just the. They've clearly got a lot of control over the entire image, not just how it looks, but how it feels and how it sounds and all this kind of stuff. And there's already I'm feeling the universe is very well sort of, I guess, maintained. Everything feels like it fits in and it's just cool. Enemies got introduced in like a fun way. Um, The system seems pretty basic and easy to understand, but is also there's a, a complexity to it. Uh, you can upgrade stuff, which is fun because it means you can make yourself better, and I like that. Um, but so I, f- I played the sort of first uh, main level where you it starts really in the thick of it. You're it starts you're on a lift and your head goes crazy, like your face mask thing, 
uh, and you start getting this guy flash up on the screen, basically just saying, kill the boss. And then as you get towards the end, uh, this woman comes onto the screen, just like, don't do it. Um, flashing in between them. Almost like that horrible level of Halo. Um, with Cortana. Right. Not as uh, awful, though. You don't slow down and it's a lot quicker. It doesn't. She doesn't, like, espouse how she loves fucking Gravemind or whatever. Um, He's just all holes and arms, like yeah. it's wild. It's a what? Japanese anime dream. <laughs> Sorry, you were saying? <laughs> uh, so, like, it's a very intense... You, you're really thrown into this story, but it immediately feels there's something going on and it kind of draws you in. Um, I'll definitely be playing more of it because it was fun as hell. Um, cool. But yeah, one of those games that's I'm, I'm having a good time with and easier to get into than Fallout because you can play just a tiny bit of it. Yeah. Which is sad but nice. Hey-ho. I will play Fallout at some point, but I don't know when. I'll have to take a holiday specifically for Fallout. I'll take a week off and just play Fallout. Holy oh, shit, that sounds all right. You would go mad, though. Also. Yeah, I was going to say, that sounds... I'd go out into intense. the real world and just start stealing people's stuff. Just pickpocketing people. Yeah, it's just like, this is mine. I, you didn't see me do it. Wait, that's how, that's how thieving really works. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very realistic system. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of... I actually spoke a lot longer than I thought I would about those two games. But it's okay, because we got distracted by the Switch in the middle. Yeah. Um, yeah, you Mark. Have, you been... oh, well, I think, don't you have a bit of a time constraint, Jack? Uh, well, I, I guess so. Um... I'm just I'm just thinking, because I'm just going to say Tomb Raider still really good. <laughs> I feel like either, either people were lying to me back in the day when they said it's a bit like Uncharted... Or maybe I just invented that, and that was never actually said. But it's it's it's, it's surprisingly good. It's like getting okay. some quite elaborate Metroidvania stuff now. As I'm getting new upgrades and like the oh, levels wow. looping back on itself, and you're getting more abilities to better explore areas I've already explored, oh, and all this okay. other shit that I just didn't expect at all in a way that's like really rad. Can you now? I'm getting into some like supernatural stuff, and yeah, it's. It's a cool game. The upgrade system is... God, I, I wish you didn't have to go through their terrible menus to use it. But the upgrade <laughs> system is really good. Uh, it's... Yeah, Tomb Raider's alright. So That's are you saying really have to say about you it. can like revisit their levels? You can go back and... Yes. Okay. So like it's madness. Like You can fast travel at camps. Okay. So you can go to anywhere else in the game and just go and explore it. But not only that, but... If you, like, the game itself, as part of its story, you sort of, you loop, at least as far as I am, I've looped back on this, like, central hub, like, three times now. Huh, okay. And each time you come back on it, you sort of approach it from a new direction, and while you've been away from it in a new area of the game, you've acquired new weapons, new upgrades, new capabilities. So, like, this most recent time I've come back on it, I've emerged back into this area, but I've got... Like rope arrows, yeah. Or on, uh, yeah. In fact, no. This most recent time I come back on it, I've got um, the trench shotgun that lets me get through certain barriers. And the last time I came back on it, I had rope arrows. And the time before that, you come back on it and you've got um, like a special climbing axe. And it just it makes it changes how you interact with that area, and it gives you new ways to move through it and a new area to get to as part of like the next step. It's really cool. It's, like, surprisingly cool in a way that I just did not expect in the slightest from this Tomb Raider game. I expected it to be, like, very much a linear, like, Uncharted-style roller coaster. And I think I don't, I don't know if that was something that w was being said at the time or if I've just kind of invented that whole cloth as a piece of critique for this game. But it's just so not that at all. It's, it's cool. I think it was often advertised as that kind of thing, as like the uncharted competitor for Xbox. Yeah, but it's just it's so not. And the crazy thing about it is like it does all of the things that Uncharted Four was like celebrated for doing to the Uncharted formula. Like obviously it's it does not have the same level of polish and craft 
and writing that Uncharted 4 does, because Uncharted 4, I imagine, cost somewhere in the range of, what, two or three times as much money. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of the way that Uncharted 4 mechanically improved upon in- Un- Uncharted, Tomb Raider does all of those things better. It's nuts. It's a really good game. I don't know. Uh, at least, at least uh, that's my opinion. I personally think that it is a really good game. And, and the I'm second one's meant to be to better. Some... Yeah, so I'm really excited to play the second one. I picked it up in that Steam sale for like seven quid or something. Nice. Yeah, I think yeah. I've got these two. They were on... Um... They were on Game for Gold, yeah. Game for Gold. So I played a bit of uh, Tomb Raider, but I don't think I ever gave it enough time. Um, sorry. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Because like, if you go back and listen to like, my first... Uh episode talking about it where I only played like the first hour and I hadn't even got to the point where the game really starts yeah. and like shit starts kicking off. I wasn't that impressed by it. It yeah. seemed very much as like an Uncharted game with like slightly more open areas. But like the rest of it wasn't that good and it was a bit janky and a bit hokey. But yeah. as it starts to open up and really reveal to you what it's about and it's like oh no, get the rope arrows, now you can go to this bit. Get the new axe so you can climb on this bit. Get the new torch so you can have light whenever you need. Get the trench shotgun so you can blow through these barriers. Like it, it, it opens itself up in very much like a Metroidvania way. Like you get new upgrades and immediately, a bit like you're playing fucking like Symphony of the Night or something. Immediately in my head, I'm like, oh yeah, shit. I can go back to this area and now I can get through this barricade yeah. and that means that I can get access to this area or I can get access to this upgrade. It's really cool. Awesome, man. It's, it's, it's good to hear that like you sort of didn't, like I guess like you didn't expect it to be as good as it's being and it's really surprised you. I guess that's maybe like a caveat of some of these uh, backlog games is you know, you, you'll see them when they first come out and you think, oh, that, that could be maybe interesting and then you might hear some bad things about it and then perhaps it's actually, actually, you know, a lot better than you first thought it was going to be. So that's good to hear. Yeah. It helps as well that I'm not dying very often. Yeah. So I'm not having to <laughs> deal with all of their like super fetishistic murder porn. Yeah, it's a little bit like <sighs> that, isn't it? I've only had that once, and it was really terrible. Like, a, a huge chunk of her face went missing. Like, it was not Oh, good. God. Yeah, it was, it was bad. But... Oh, wow, okay. Other than that, the times I've been dying is, like, I get a jump wrong and I just fall off a cliff, and then it just kind of fades out as she falls down a cliff, and it's not that weird. I haven't had to deal with too many of their, like, super gnarly... Obviously, like, even during regular gameplay and, like, quick time events and stuff, they have her getting into some really bad situations and mm. getting fucked up, but I haven't had to deal with anything too unpleasant yet, which is nice. Like I a think. stick I've... right through her. Like, immediately. Ugh. Immediately. It's... Yeah, there is some shit in that game. There's You go to this one bit that's full of, like, corpses, and she's just, like, crawling around in a big pile of heads. Oh god! Yeah, it doesn't even seem right. like it's going to be that kind of game. I feel like like uh, Tomb Raider is the kind of game that you look at it and hear about it, and I feel like a parent would be happy to buy it for their kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess Tomb Raider's always been a bit weird, right? Because like the very first one has you fighting a fucking T Rex. Like it's always had a bit of a supernatural edge to it. This one does have that, but it's not just like oh, the island's mystical and you can't get off it. It's like, oh, no, there are straight-up fucking samurai ghosts on it that mutilate corpses and you have to, like, swim through a big pile of heads. And it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> it's, it's rough. It's very gross. Like, really, really gross. <laughs> kind of makes me not want to play it despite how good you claim it to be. <laughs> it's like, it's all right. that's too much. I, I think also playing on a uh, mouse and keyboard makes some of the combat a bit trivial. Huh. I yeah. feel like I shouldn't be getting headshots as easily as I am, but I'm just squeezing off headshots and like just walking through. Mate, you're just too fucking areas. good. <laughs> I just, I just, I just think it's been tuned for someone with a controller. As I've already discussed with how like janky large parts of it are, I think yeah. it's been tuned for a controller. I feel like. Unless you want to be uh, really good at shooting things, all games should be played with a controller. Even RTSs. Especially RTSs. Fucking pervert. (laughs) All units. 
I only want Halo Wars style RTSs from now on. Everything else is too much. All units. <laughs> <laughs> that was my Tomb Raider check in, Jack. Because you do, theoretically, oh, we can't be talking for like another fucking 40 minutes. So, Jack, <laughs> what's up, dude? Yo, yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I got back around to playing some Dishonored. Um, yeah, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm really getting back in. So, I guess, like, where I left off last time, I finished, like, the first main bit with the High Overseer. Um, yeah. And I was going around doing some other stuff as well. And then I think I came back to it and I was doing... So the first thing that I did, I played a couple of missions on it, actually, um, since the last time I spoke about it. And I guess I think this might be like the second or third one where you go to the uh, Pendleton's place. I think it's like the Golden Cat, I think it's called. Yeah, yes, um, that's like a... I think that might be like a highlight of that game, honestly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's a... It's a I like that level in itself is I I I think really well done. Um, so I guess like it starts off you go to like find Slackjaw and then he tells you about the Pendletons I believe, and he tells you basically hey look this is where they think that uh, Emily might be kept. Um, and Emily is of course the one uh, the the person or the little kid that uh, I guess got kidnapped from the Queen uh, when you were protecting or supposedly meant to be being her bodyguard um and you get framed for it and then you have to try and prove that it wasn't you so you go to this place called the golden cat and they've got emily captive in there and yeah like i say i mean i think it's a really well designed level uh, obviously there's a bunch of stuff to do before you get to the main part where it is just you trying to infiltrate into this building um but yeah i think it very much builds on you know what what we were talking about when I first sat down and played some of it was, you know, it's, it gives you an area or maybe, you know, a couple of areas that you have to move through, but it basically just gives you an area, put some enemies in it, gives you a couple of objectives. Some of them are optional. Some of them, like you have one main objective and then you have a couple of other things. You have your runes and your, 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 um, bone things. I forget what they're called. Um, bone charms. Yes. Bone charms. And then, they just give you that area and they say, look, here's where you need to get to. Get there however you want, theoretically. And and I, I actually really, like, quite enjoy that. And I was finding myself, I guess, like, I'd be dropping into an area and then I'd be like, right, what is the best way to go about doing this? And immediately just looking up everywhere, looking for ledges, trying to find, mm. like, the best way to go about the mission without maybe getting too engaged in fights. Because, I guess, at, at, at times... If you do get spotted and there's a whole bunch of dudes there, you know they do come onto you pretty quickly. Um, so the I dudes guess... always coming onto you, mate, <laughs> especially in the Golden Cat. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I like. I think yeah, the way that I sort of attacked the uh, Golden Cat mission, I, I in like I say, I sort of looked around a bit, sort of tried to figure out if there was a way that I could just avoid all of the guys that were outside guarding it. And I managed to get up on the ledge, and there was just like a open window, uh, conveniently placed. So I snuck in through there, and then obviously I think there's two Pendletons that you have to uh, that you have to, I guess, you can kill them, or you can I think you can do a couple of other things with them. Um, but so you've got Curtis Pendleton and Morgan Pendleton, um, and you have to I guess, yeah, you you can either decide to kill them both, which is what I decided to do, or I think there are those a couple those of... guys. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, there's a few um, non-lethal ones. There's only a few uh, targets you actually have to kill. Yeah. So I think um, these ones. I think the non-lethal one is you just put them to work for Slackjaw. I think. I think you just have to like maybe uh, get them unconscious and then take them back and give them to Slackjaw, and he'll just. I think they'll, or you can basically force them to work for him. I think. It's how that yeah, works. Like, let's be honest, the, a lot of the non-lethal kills in Dishonored are, like, worse than death. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's <laughs> almost like, do you want to kill this guy, or do you want to have this guy work as a slave in a mine for the rest of his life? <laughs> it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, so, I think the the one thing that I did like about, or, I guess I found it, like, it, uh, the first person that I went and killed was Morgan Pendleton, but I think uh, they're in like a steam room 
and uh, you you hear a couple of like the guards talking about hey look did you hear that there was like something up with uh the gas going into the steam room that they think it might be poisonous and then i'm just like wait a minute okay so then i i find out where like the room is adjacent to the steam room and i see like a little wheel that you can turn and i was like hey what happens if i do this and you just flood the entire room with like poisonous gas which i think is just it's i guess it's like it's fucking awful but like it, it just shows like how I guess how many different quirks the game has in that you know you, you'll, you'll hear people talking about something and then you'll be they'll, they'll actually be talking about something that you can physically do in the game yeah which I think is actually quite cool like you have to really pay attention if you pay attention to the world you kind of get so much more out of the game which is yeah a really cool so I just looked this up and it says uh in exchange, Slackdraw will have the Pendleton brothers dealt with for Corvo real quiet-like. This represents the mission's non-lethal elimination. So the non-lethal elimination seems to just be someone else kills them. Because <laughs> I feel like that's what dealt with real quiet-like means. Right? Well, I guess there's no blood on your hands. Yeah. <laughs> just fish. Oh, oh Corvo. <laughs> just fish. Fucking hell. <laughs> We're not all doing just fish runs, Mark. Just fish run is the only way to play Dishonored, okay? You wait while I boot up Dishonored 2, finally. The knife, the knife and the grubby hands full of tuna is coming straight back out. <laughs> but this time we're playing as Emily. And we're going to show how it's like father, like I'm not going to finish that sentence. <laughs> did, I just, did I just spoil that game? <laughs> uh, no. Okay, but yeah, cool. I mean, like, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, I did that mission, and then I did do another one afterwards. But I think, like, yeah, I like, I find myself at the moment, like, like I say, you, you've got your runes and your bone charms that you can go around and collect in each level, and I find myself really going out of the way to like actually collect all of them, as you should. Mm. Yeah. And, and and I feel like it just like, I guess you want to get that... all them sweet upgrades, right? That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, and I feel like as well in terms of like the controls of it, I'm sort of getting a bit more used to like knowing. So obviously you have your different abilities and your weapons and whatever will be bound to your number keys. And I'm sort of you play mouse a... and keyboard, yeah. Yes. Okay. And I'm sort of getting a bit more used to like knowing which number is the the thing that I want to have. And, and, and use so I know obviously one is the pistol and two is the crossbow and I think really the only other ones that I use are six seven eight which are for the rune finder or like the, the the little heart thing that you have to find the runes and the bone charms and seven is the blink and eight is like the dark vision that you can use and I right. find I, I feel like I perhaps should be using some of the other weapons or, or some of the other variants of the weapons because I know you can get like sleep darts which are actually quite quite useful i know as well one of the ones that i actually quite they make like it really easy just to slit people's throats once they're unconscious honestly <laughs> yeah. that is not the point of the sleep darts man <laughs> god <laughs> damn it I, I, I like the uh, little fire dart as well which explodes on impact I, I, I quite like that one um i also got the mark i think you mentioned it the last time we spoke about it but the upgrade that lets you uh if, if you kill someone and you haven't been seen then they just fade away so fucking OP. Which, Especially yeah. when you upgrade that and it just means if you just kill someone, they just disappear. Yeah. yeah. No matter what. <laughs> it's just, it, it's ridiculous. Because <laughs> then I, I feel like, yeah, there, there are definitely a lot of situations where, you know, there, there'll be a couple of guys in an alleyway and I want to try and take them out one by one and not have to worry about leaving their body behind. Um, which, I, I yeah, it, it makes it really, really useful if you can just kill it and, and then, I guess, like, sneak out of the little area that you're in and then kill one guy and then go back and then wait for the other guy to walk around a bit more and then take him out strategically i feel like that's a it's, it's a very good mechanic to have in it and i think yeah it, make, it certainly makes the whole not being seen aspect a lot easier it does make mm. you forget if you do a second run that you need to hide bodies because <laughs> <laughs> last time they just disappeared for you yeah, yeah, because like for yeah, the entire last good. half of that game, you're literally just like killing people. If oh, you man. are doing a murder run, just like left, right, and center, and then bodies okay. disappearing. <laughs> you should get you should get some uh, some possession on the go as well. That's fun. Oh yeah, possession is wild. I've possession's really rat. cool. 
I've, I've possessed a rat before, and I found out like I guess it, it's quite useful to like get between well, like two places if you're if you're surrounded by a whole bunch of dudes. But it I really actually... changes up the movement, like because there's lots of different routes that are only yeah. you can only get through as a rat. There's I think I think it's in Dishonored One. Uh, there's some bits where you can possess a fish and go through like there a is. fish grate instead of a rat grate. I was going to say, yeah, there is some wild fish play in that game. If you are into fish, <laughs> as I am, <laughs> eating fish, possessing fish, all possess, fish, then all eat the fish. Oh man, yeah, yeah well, you got mate, you got to show that fish is boss. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like like I'm enjoying it. The next the next mission I did was the one with the giant bridge. Where you have to, oh, that uh, one's really good as well. Yeah. There are some really incredible locations in that game. Some like properly evocative, memorable places you go to. Hot yeah. take: Dishonored is fucking sick, <laughs> mate. That like is, that's a that, roasting hot take. <laughs> that level. So I think like the the entire thing behind it is you have to try and abduct the uh, Sokolov, and yeah, yes. like that bridge part of it. The first time I, 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 I approached it, I was like, right, okay, this is just a bridge, I just need to get through it. And then you go through it, and and I sort of kept dying a couple of times just before I got to the bridge, because there's a whole bunch of dudes there, and I was just like, oh man, I, I, like, I keep trying this, and it's not working the way that I want it to work. Or it's not, perhaps, you know, going the way that it, it should be going. And then I sort of had a break away from it and I came back into it and approached it from a different angle and I was just trying again you know looking around my environment trying to figure out the best way to get around without alerting too many guards um and yeah like as soon as you get onto the bridge and you, you can literally miss out the entire bridge without just just without killing anyone yeah. you can just hmm. jump on top of the bridge and just walk over it and I was just like holy shit this is just like insane there's about 20 guys below me and i'm just missing them entirely which i actually didn't mind doing because yeah i, I just feel like yeah like, like 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 we've said you know the the different there's so many different ways to approach each individual mission and i actually am finding that rather enjoyable um and yeah like so as, as well i guess i think that this is or, or this was the first time, so the whole idea of this mission is you actually don't need to kill this guy. You need to, you know, I, I guess, um, knock him unconscious and then, you know, carry him back to Samuel, who will take him on the boat back to uh, back to your home base. And I guess, like, yeah, it's it, 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 was, it was interesting, or I found it interesting because I found myself being a hell of a lot more sneaky than I would perhaps otherwise have been because getting him back there you know you, you obviously can't jump mm. off stuff you can't throw him anywhere because then he'll just die you, you have to sort of you know be a bit sneaky and you know i guess check your surroundings and then say okay there's a couple of guys here i'm gonna put sokolov down then i'm gonna go try and deal with these guys then come back pick him up move on to the next little area and i actually found that yeah i, I found it really really good um, and, and and as I say, like it's, I, I'm getting to grips a bit more with the uh, with, with the controls as well, and I'm finding myself, yeah, just I guess exploring the environment a hell of a lot more as well. So, yeah, all in all, so far, I mean, I'm, I, I, I'd say I'm maybe I, I don't actually know how long Dishonored is. I'd probably say I'm a, I'm, I'm a, you know, maybe at least a third of the way through that game. Um, but yeah, it's longer like I say, than you think. Yeah, it's I'm, longer than I'm actually think. enjoying it. It's definitely not. Uh, maybe nine missions. I don't know. Oh, okay. It's it's it goes on though because there's a few bits in it where it's like, oh, we're gonna end, and then it's like, no, it is an entire extra <laughs> act of the game. And like, oh, yeah, it, 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 it there is a lot to it, and not in a bad way. It's really cool. Yeah. It is very much in that like uh, Deus Ex, um, canon of games where it is. There's a lot to it. It's not necessarily like a pure RPG, but it definitely yeah. takes from that crib book in terms of like, yeah. no, now you have to go to this whole new fucking zone and there's a whole bunch of new cool shit going on. So this, yeah. uh, the wiki claims that you are, that that is the middle mission, but I think okay. the last few missions are longer. Okay. So you're, well, Yeah, and you're also like, obviously there are missions but then there is a point in that game where a lot of stuff starts happening at like the the hub as well and yeah. like some other bits and yeah those like last couple of missions are really fucking long yeah 
the last mission in particular actually is well, the last couple of missions are really really big areas the last couple of missions are like the size of like that entire bridge area like a couple of times over like they're fucking huge zones you move through yeah it's, they've God, created it's fucking good yeah each level is just this incredible creation and they're huge Oh man, I was going to play like Dying Light, I think, after beating Tomb Raider, but maybe I'll just play Dishonored 2. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, man. Dishonored's so fucking good. So, is is Dishonored 2 like a, like a, like a, I guess it is an exact continuation of the first game, is it? Or Well, it's, uh, it's in the future and like uh, however many years after and isn't a follow on of the story or anything, really. Um, okay. But it's the same. It's still Corvo. Spoilers, he doesn't die in the game. In Dishonored okay. 1. But you're still Corvo. Spoilers. Um, you don't have to be, though. You don't have to be. Yeah, that was their whole shtick. You can select to be him or someone else. Okay. That was one of the, one of the reviews that I read was really interesting, actually, because it, ta- it was for Dishonored 2, because it was talking about how, like, oh, yeah, well, you know, in Dishonored 2... You can choose to play as Emily and rescue Corvo over the length of the game in a artful inversion of the themes of the first game, demonstrating how Emily has risen to take on the role of protector, or you can literally repeat the plot of the first game again. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, because you can just you can just play as Corvo and rescue Emily again. <laughs> Or you play as Emily okay. and rescue Corvo, and it's like this. It, it's, it's either like a thematic inversion, or it's literally just the same game. Yeah. Huh. Which I thought it was quite a funny review. And I selected Corvo when I started playing it, which I think is why I disappointed myself. Because it's just like it's really good, but it's kind of just more of the same. Um, aren't yeah, all the, okay. the aren't all the abilities and shit the same as well? Yeah, you only get the fun new stuff if you be Emily, basically. Yeah, Emily gets loads of fucking wild magic shit, doesn't she? Yeah, so like instead of blink, she gets um, like you can kind of sort of stretch out in a shadow form and it's kind of like blink but not quite kind of stuff and um she gets all kind of weird shadow magic stuff yeah huh. i mean so does corvo but it's different different shadow is it, magic is it like the is it the same i get i suppose it's is it the same missions that you have to do for the second one or is it like i guess have some like character specific missions that you can only do if you pick i'm not sure I think they're mostly the same because you still have like the House of Clocks and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, okay. I, I think they're pretty much the same. Yeah, they might have some slight change for like obviously story will be a bit different, but yeah, I think it's uh, all the the amount of detail that goes into the levels. I'd be shocked if they had a level. I'd be shocked if they had unique levels. Just because that's that's so much work. It's double the yeah. amount of work. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever play? And this is I'm bringing it back to Dishonored One. Did you ever play the DLC for Dishonored One, Dylan? I didn't know because I played I it. So that's like, supposed to be really good. Yeah, I've seen. I mean, the Dis- the the DLC for both of them is meant to be incredible for Dishonored and. Uh... Yes, Death of the Outsider is. I saw it like topping some of Game of the Year lists the year that it came out. Like Death of the Outsider is supposed to be, like pants shittingly good yeah because it's they um dishonor 2 didn't do so well right so they kind of just gave up hope and were like we're gonna put all the stupid crazy weird shit in death of the outsider so you're insanely overpowered but they make it kind of fun yeah d- yeah exactly that i would be interested obviously you don't have to jack but if you get to a point where you're really into dishonor you finish it Mm. And you want to play either of the two DLC packs and tell me if they're worth buying because they're only four pounds each, <laughs> and say if there's if there's anything worth worth playing in them, then uh, I I wouldn't be opposed to you doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like like I said, I mean, I, like I'm definitely getting a lot more like into it. Um, so I guess like yeah, like I'm I'm I still yeah, obviously I'm probably only about halfway through, like 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 Dylan said, but it. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'll give it a look when the time comes. I'll, I'll see what they're all about. Don't force yourself to like it either, Jack. Just because we like no. it doesn't mean you have to. But like, no, I mean, I am, I am actually really enjoying it at the moment. Like, considering it's like, again, it was one of those games that I picked up in the Steam sale and then just, I just left it. I, I just never, never came to it. And and then now I've actually, 
I guess not really giving myself a, an excuse, but you know, it's one of those games that has always been there and has always been, oh, you should definitely play this game. And I've heard so much good stuff about it. And yeah, yeah, um, I, I'm really looking forward to playing through the rest of it. Um, yeah, I, like like I say, I've, I've, I'm having fun with uh, Dishonored so far. Nice. I'm glad it's Hell good yeah. stuff. Hey, it's all fish, all knife. It's the only way. <laughs> I think we've had a we've had a good uh, all backed up experience this week. I guess we've been cons- positive. Yeah, I'm glad I'm I switched. A little bit disappointed in you for stopping playing Fallout Three, but that's fine. It has to happen. I'm a, I, it's okay. That's the point of this show. Yeah, I mean, sorry, I just got distracted by a terrible whirring noise. I don't know what's happening. Um, um, I thought it was another bird, and I was going to be really disappointed in you. I'm glad you couldn't really hear it. Uh, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, I it, I'm a little bit annoyed that I didn't really get into Fallout, but I th- could. Uh, I think the reason I changed it's not because I didn't like it, but because I found myself never getting myself to play it. I didn't want to come into these episodes being like, oh yeah, I did a tiny bit more Fallout, and not really bringing anything. So I figured just switch it up, see what I can play, and see what I can actually then talk about, and then hopefully later on I can get into Fallout, and maybe I'll play drips and drabs throughout. I, my uh, game hour a week you were so. doing, you'd be playing Fallout for like two years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's too much. Um, so yeah, I figured switch it up, go for something else, and I'm glad I did because I had more to talk about the Blob and the and Ruiner than uh, just goings on in the mutant underground. The Blob sounds cool, man. Yeah, it's the Blob. I, I didn't realize. I thought it was a bit more. Um, extra than the jazz meditation experience that you're describing but that sounds sounds exactly exactly what i fucking need right now it might get <laughs> to be fair i only played a little bit at the beginning so it might get more intense but i was just kind of rolling around and especially because they they say there's a time limit i think uh, and then the bad guys like come and get you but i was playing for ages on that first level I was playing for like 20 minutes and nothing ever happened because you just kind of roam around collecting time ex- time extensions and paint blobs. And so there might be some level of gamifiedness to it. But at the moment, it really does just feel like a fun meditation. So, yeah, I think it's something everybody needs nowadays. See if you can get it on the Switch. Okay. Just walk, cool. walk around like... Your train journey in with your Switch. Just playing the blob. You'll come in so fucking pieced out, man. Just blissing out on the train. <laughs> but, yeah. All right. Should we call that a thing? Yeah. Uh, that has been all backed up. You can find us on uh, iTunes and SoundCloud at All Backed Up. Is that what it's now called? Ah, oh, there's a tagline yeah, I forgot. Probably. <laughs> All backed up uh, video game SOS or something. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Nailed it. Uh, and on Send an SOS. YouTube at Low Expectations Media, there'll be a playlist for you to peruse and enjoy our back catalogue. Um, I've been Dylan and I've been joined by Mark and Jack. It's been a Hi. pleasure as always. And yeah, we'll speak to you next week. Bye. Ooh-ha.